Hey guys, it's Jake from Evolving Daily. Today I want to talk about medical gear. It's something that I think anybody can carry. I carry all the time, every day. Alright, so guys, this is my second line kit. This isn't on me all the time. I don't carry this all the time. But it's always in my car or near me at work things like that. So there's more in here than just medical. There's things that I use on a daily basis. This is a small tool bag, I think, from Original SOE. I'll link it below. Uh, a few cold patches on the outside because why not. Um, so inside I have a lot more than just medical, but on top, as soon as I reach in, is my what I would consider my second line medical. There are some other supplemental things in here that I could or maybe use with this, but it would make it bigger, it wouldn't fit. So I keep this so that I can take it out of here, grab it and take off, throw it to somebody, which has been done, we'll talk about that. But there are a few other things in here and we'll get into them in a minute. But as far as this kit, I think Everyone should keep something very similar to this at their work, in their car, at the house, in their backpack, things like that. Alright guys, so first let's talk about the pouch and the outsides. The pouch is an SOE admin pouch or an NSW admin pouch. One of the two, I'll put corrections below. If you're going to, if you're going to make medical like this, buy at least a good pouch. Um, SOE makes great stuff. If I put all this stuff in a similar size bag from Amazon or eBay, these zippers would just fly apart. It, this, this is packed pretty full. So on the outside, have a cat tourniquet, a carabiner holding together my zipper pulls so they don't come apart, and a set of shears. Usually I have a drug seal right here holding the the zipper pulls together and it's not necessarily holding them together it's showing me that just picking up and looking at it I haven't been in there I haven't taken anything out so I know it's full I know what it has in it so if we take off the carabiner to get to the zipper pulls we have a carabiner in case you need to use it for something I don't know a uh, set of shears which are important if you have to visualize a wound if you have to cut off something if somebody's hung up in a car or in a seat belt or something like that a good set of trauma shears these will cut through pennies even the cheap ones these are a must-have and they're very robust then on the outside we have a cat tourniquet in a sheep dog systems I think I'll put a link to his stuff below it's a pretty ingenious little mounting system for a tourniquet, um, so you just pull your tourniquet out. It works great. Uh, I recommend anybody, if you have pals, molly, webbing, all this, whatever the hell it is, get a couple of these. They're super cheap, um, and you can adjust the retention up, down, whatever, to put bigger, smaller things in. And there's our cat tourniquet. Make sure if you're buying a cat tourniquet that you get a cat tourniquet. There are a lot of imposters that say they're the same thing and they're not. So now we'll move inside the pouch which is stuffed full because this was recently used. A couple small things inside of it had a car wreck. Car was down over the hill. There was already another firefighter down there. He said, hey I need I think he called for 4 by 4s or something so in the meantime, while I went and got my bigger bag out of the car, took this, threw it close to him, he got into it and used some things. Um, things that are going to fall out. Some galls for packing wounds. Um, TK4, nasopharyngeal airway. A pin for documenting writing on the tourniquet, which I should probably actually throw a marker in here. A uh, 50 gram quick clot. I think it's 50, 25, a 25 gram quick clot, should put a 50 back in here. Um, a thin cinch, 
which has lost its vacuum seal, a Phoenix some kind of light, a TK09, a pretty nice little light. Uh, in a kit like this, I always screw out the tail cap so that it doesn't turn on and ruin the flash or ruin the batteries. So that you have to screw in, you have to screw in the, the tail cap for it to work. Pro tip. Um, and it's Rayleigh really because wound packing, you can never have enough as far as I'm concerned. And some 4 by 4s And I think that's it. There's a few other things that I keep in here. Uh, the last thing, if you work in a non-permissive environment or you're going to be taking this into it a lot, a spare mag for my Glock 17. The first thing you need to do for a gunshot wound is return fire. Probably. So, just in case. You never know. Uh, so, the pouch itself, there are, there's all kinds of room for mounting things. You can put a Velcro pouch here, stab it there, something that you could tear off and give to somebody or however you need to use it. Uh, this little pouch I use for the flashlight. Two different size, um, two different sizes of elastic here for whatever you would put in the bottom. Elastic on the sides for bandages, whatever. There are two, two little sleeves here where you can put things, and one on this side. Back has some Velcro, uh, pals webbing, all that stuff. And that's one thing with medical. Any medical pouch or backpack or anything like that, always make sure that you get something that zips all the way down on all three sides so that you can open it up all the way. If you get a pouch that only zips open on the top or halfway down the sides, then you have to dig down in here to find things. Make sure you get a pouch that zips down all the way, you flop it open, you have access to everything. So these... These are the things that I keep in the kit. Um, there's a couple other, I have to look at my inventory list. Stuff may have fell out on that call. But this is the stuff I keep in there and this is very close to me all during the day. So guys, I appreciate you watching. This is my second line kit. Um, this is the things that are in it. It's close to me all day, but it's not immediately on me. And remember, you need to prepare to thrive while others survive. Thanks.